Howdy folks, my name is Jonaki. And this is Madame Bathsheba. And together we are Catamancy Tarot. So here we are, we made it, the end of another month. And the end of the month means it's time for another What's in My Basket video. So today I thought I would explore um, a particular kind of tarot deck that I really enjoy working with and I realize I actually have quite a few of them and that's abstract style tarot decks. Now abstract art comes in all types of shapes and forms and it can be uh, a particularly like interesting but maybe um, perhaps a little bit more difficult type of art to kind of work with it, it, for tarot purposes but I think there's a lot of really interesting ones out there and I really enjoy using them. So today what I thought I would do is I'll show you what's in my basket. Um, I'll, I'll take you through my kind of collection, my stash of abstract style decks, and I'll talk you through the way I like to use some of them. Um, and at the end, what I'll do is at the end of all of my basket videos, I like to do a little collective reading. And this is a way for you to kind of like see my own reading style, see how I work with these decks, especially how to read uh, like abstract style art. Um, and remember, you can always, I do, I never, uh, don't usually mention it on here, but I'll plug it now. I also do reading, so you can book a reading with me live over Zoom. Um, down, you'll find the link in the description to do that. Um, so you can do that whenever. Um, and so I will go ahead and I'll take you through the basket. Um, and I also just wanted to mention this is probably, um, I'm about to go, uh, in case you don't know, I'm a graduate student um, working on my dissertation. And the next two months I'm going to be doing this uh, writing intensive workshop. So there's a chance that in the next um, two months or so till the end of June, I might have a little bit less time for making videos. I'll still try and post a few, um, but probably not in the same kind of volume as I've been able to keep up recently. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up of that. But with that said, without further ado, let's dive in to some abstract decks. Alrighty, here we go. So I figured I'd got to start with the classics, right? Margaret Peterson, total classic. This is the uh, the anniversary edition that is this lovely, lovely color. Uh, can you tell it's uh, one of my favorite colors? Um, but this is a, uh, this deck is, is not kind of entirely abstract. You still do have some like, figural representation, but the art overall is kind of, it is very abstract. And this is a, this is a deck that is like very well loved in part, um, because of the booklet. Um, you know, this is, you know, we, we all know that this is a deck that famously took what, like 21 years. Um, and I think one of the, yeah, one of the reasons this deck um, work so well is even though the the images are quite abstract the the little book um, is really quite lovely um, and it gives I think one nice thing it does is for the majors it gives you these little kind of like poems which I think is like uh, if you're going to have like abstract art and then poetry is a little bit more kind of like abstract style of language, I think that's actually a really great choice. And so the meanings from this deck don't become um, quite so narrow. It's kind of like a, it's a more kind of expansive um, way to, to work with a deck. And I, I really like it for that reason. I think in a recent video I heard Meg from Rose Honey Ritual say that this is the kind of art that you would find in a dentist's office in the 90s <laughs> and I I love that a lot um I can kind of see that but I do one of the things that's really fun about this deck is the closer you you look kind of the more in depth you can go I think that's something that's really interesting about this deck is that from afar um, you kind of, it's kind of very impressionistic. You get an overall vibe, but as you kind of look deeper, you start to see, oh, 
look, there's a, a critter there, and there's like a shadowy woman there, and a feather, and um, yeah, so this is, uh, this is probably one of my favorite cards in the deck. Um, I think it's really lovely. Uh, and I, yeah, uh, I, you know, I think this is a deck that we're all kind of familiar with and it works for some folks. And for some folks, I think that the abstraction is a little bit, a little bit too much. But as I mentioned, I think, um, this deck isn't so much about trying to like pin down, uh, for me, it's not about like trying to pin things down. It's more about trying to kind of like open things up or just kind of, um, you know, uh, stare off, uh, and kind of like lose yourself in the, in the, in the details. So that is Margaret Peterson. Um, we'll put that, we'll put that away here. And another deck that's kind of um, in a similar vein, um, I would say, is this one. And this is the Dream Dust Shamanic Tarot. Um, now, this was a deck that was um, out of print for s quite some time, but I believe the author, um, Sue Kovacs, just did another printing of this. Um, I'm not super sure, but I'm pretty sure there's another edition out there now. Um, and so Sue Kovacs, I believe, was a student of um, Sandra Ingerman, who was uh, in in turn a student of Michael Harner. So, if you're familiar with um, Michael Harner's work on like um, core shamanism, uh, so she identifies as a shamanic practitioner from this kind of particular lineage, and so her depictions in this card. Um, I think the idea for her was to kind of like really journey into these cards. Um, and so I do, I really love the majors, um, in this deck. The majors are especially, especially, um, intriguing to me. Um, I like the kind of uniqueness of the colors. And I think for me, some of the suits, um, are maybe a little bit more successful than others. Like I love the colors in the, in the suit of, um, uh, earth. She's, she has them, um, they're elemental suits. Um, and some, uh, like the fire suit for me, I think, um, I don't know, maybe it's, it's the, so in, in some ways I think there's, uh, some of the suits feel like um, the motif seems a little bit repetitive to me, but overall, I still really, I still really enjoy using this deck. And um, what's interesting about this deck is it has at the bottom we get uh, text on the cards. So here we have the six of wind, and we have a time of transition, a rite of passage, change brings wonderment, balance is restored letting go of the past to live peacefully in the moment, um, which are all, um, you know, quite nice six of swords, um, kind of meaning. So in that way, one of the ways this deck becomes readable is even though you're not given a kind of a representational image, you are giving, given, um, text on the cards that has this kind of like more traditional, um, tarot meanings, um, I love this devil card. <laughs> I think it's so great. Um, I one thing, yeah, I will say this is uh, it's it's gilded and it, the gilding from for me is chipping quite a lot and it's a very uh, high gloss. <laughs> so the cards feel quite plasticky, which isn't my favorite. Um, I like this one a lot. It looks like a pear to me. And that's one of the fun things about abstract decks too, is that like, to me, this just looks like a juicy pear that you want to bite into. And maybe there's some seeds inside of the pear or, you know, something waiting to get out. So it, it becomes, it for me, um, it becomes less about uh, trying to kind of, I pay less attention to these the kind of more traditional meanings and I kind of go more into like 
what does what do these kind of forms suggest to one another like what might be some uh like dominant colors or like movement something looks like it's coming in through this way or you know um uh yeah so uh there's that and then the other thing is the main the main way i use this deck is i use this for dream work um, so there's a particular spread I really enjoy doing for dreams and I'll use this deck and I'll pair it with a number of others that I also like, um, for dream work stuff like the navigators of the mystic sea or my, um, uh, careful tarot or like a few others. Um, and I think, uh, the abstract, uh, quality of this deck lends itself really well to dream readings because a lot of times when I'm doing a reading on a dream, um, sometimes I'll have really distinct imagery to work with that I'll, I can recall clearly. But sometimes I just have this like wishy-washy kind of feeling that I want to explore. And I feel like abstract art allows you to explore things that are a little bit more diffuse without ha actually having to kind of like really pin things down. Um, yeah, so that's the... Um, Dream Dust Shamanic Tarot, um, which is a really fun one. And then another uh, uh, heavy hitter <laughs> in abstract style decks is this one, and that's the Ethel Calhoun Tarot is Color. Um, I've shown this deck off. This was in my um, like best decks of last year. It was in my top 10 uh, indie decks. This is like a very very strong favorite of mine. Um, and so it's another, it's another abstract, uh, deck. And these images were made, um, pouring, uh, enamel colors, I believe. Um, and they were made, um, by Ethel Calhoun, who is a practicing, um, uh, hermetic occultist. Um, and, she made these in the 70s, and so all of them, you'll notice, have the uh, hermetic titles. And so for me, this is a, another really interesting kind of way to work with abstract art, is um, what she's kind of tapping into are, are kind of the, the Golden Dawn color correspondences, uh, along with the um, hermetic titles for the cards. Um, and I think it's so, I think it's really quite beautiful. Um, and I will often kind of like use, uh, use these cards um, in altar work um, and have them, have them set up on my altar. And when I lay out a couple of them, uh, it feels... Um, it feels like color becomes the main thing that you can read from this deck. So um, if you have your own kind of color associations or you can kind of like, uh, you know, read into like what is what is that kind of lightning spark that's going on or um, ha like paying attention to if there's like any uh, any like overlaps or any colors that become kind of dominant. I've pulled like all red cards before or all yellow cards before and to me that feels like it's a much more um, energetic style reading um, if what you're picking up is on these different kind of like uh, forms and colors and less, you know, um, I think as with a lot of abstract decks, for me it's less about trying to like pin something down in exactitude and more about just kind of like um, feeling into uh, a, a vibe or uh, a frequency or um, yeah, something along those lines. And I think you can still get like really remarkable, um, you know, uh, synchronicities or things that kind of like pop out through just the use of like when you just distill readings down to uh, form and color and movement and you don't have a lot of the um, sort of uh, s standard 
figural representation going on. Um, yeah, so that is Tarot as Color, an absolute classic. Um, I'm so glad they reprinted it. And uh, if you didn't know, it's a scented deck and it smells quite lovely. Um, the next abstract deck I'm going to show you is uh, one of my favorite abstract decks, and that's a, a deck called Abstract Futures by Hilma's Ghost. Now, this is a deck that was made, um, let's see here, it was made, um, I have a first edition, which was printed in 2021, um, and the two artists' names who form Hilma's Ghost are Daniel uh, uh, Ted. Tegager and uh, Charmis the Ray. I'm not sure if I pronounced those correctly, so apologies if I did not. Um, but if you are familiar with um, Hilma Clint's work, um, this deck, um, these are the backs. I think the first edition is gilded in silver and the uh, I think the second edition in gold. Um, but this deck is... Um, inspired by Hilma Clint's artwork. And then uh, Hilma Clint is someone who was, um, uh, she did automatic painting. So where a lot of the painting that she did was like, uh, she was a um, part of the like spiritualism movement. And so a lot of her work was channeled. Um, and so I think it's so awesome that this, Artist Collective are, are then kind of um, channeling her ghost in, in making this, this deck. Um, and this is, uh, they, they, I know they display a lot of their galleries and like, or display a lot of this, their artwork in like, um, uh, kind of, I don't know, uh, but galleries in New York City, so it's it they're they're kind of um, known on the fine art scene in New York, New York. So this deck is a little bit um, a little bit on the pricier end of the decks I'm showing today. Um, I think it retails for a hundred dollars. I got this copy used off of Facebook Marketplace, so I saved probably like thirty dollars um, buying it used. Um, and it was my Christmas present to myself two Christmases ago, and I really love it. Um, as you'll see, all the majors are kind of like really abstract, but I can still find, like read a lot into what's going on. A lot of the majors are set against this black backdrop, and it feels very celestial. So this feels like, I don't know, some kind of like command station at the center of a a solar system that's like sending out signals to different like planetary bodies. So it feels like this sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, solar system control center, which I think is a fun reading of the sun. Um, so you get, um, you get stuff like that. Um, <laughs> and you know, uh, you start, uh, to me, this, this artwork is very lively. And so you can really, uh, it really comes alive. And I will be doing, um, I'm planning on doing a full th flip through of this deck soon. Um, I know a few people kind of requested it. So I'll uh, keep an eye out for, for that. But as you can see here, um, uh, each of the suits suits has its own kind of like color scheme so in the wands we're dealing with these kind of like sharp pointed uh it, to me they almost look like sewing needles um and the color red and we're getting this kind of geometric sort of patchwork of stuff um and then for the cups we have um this color orange, the Ace of Cups is the cover, the the card that's on the cover, um, and we get we get uh, some geometric formations with them as well. And then here with the swords, I think the swords and the um, pentacles are my favorites. So we get this kind of like gray silver colors with these like pinks and teals. I think they're just really, really quite beautiful. 
Um, and I think this is one of the decks that I'm going to use in the sample reading. Um, so you can see how I think it actually reads quite well, um, for me at least. Yeah, this is, this is a, a keeper for sure. Um, I'm very, very glad to have it in my collection. And it's good friends with the next deck I'm going to show you. This, um, I don't have the box handy, but I can show you the back of the cards. This is the Ari Kira Celestial D Guidance Oracle by a um, medical intuitive from Australia. It's, uh, the name is Trademarked. Um, so I think Ari Kira is a being that this intuitive has been in touch with. And I like this deck um, because it's kind of, it's kind of really cheesy, but in the best way possible. Each of the colors um, represent a different suit based on one of the kind of um, energetic bodies. Um, and so you get this kind of like bad computer generated art in these bright colors and then you get kind of keywords and to me um this this is a very uh this is a super vibey deck <laughs> um and the kinds of readings it gives are kind of on a very kind of energetic frequency so here like all of the purple cards represent the eth etheric body um and so you know um You'll get keywords like uh, elementals, celestial, wonderful, uh, cherubic, um, whatever that means. Um, and uh, yeah, all of the red cards are for the physical body. Um, and, and so each of, each of the suits will have one of these kind of like uh, titular cards um, for each of the suits. But I find that this, this deck um, reads, uh, really well with this one, <laughs> uh, you know, let's see, so I find a lot of, like, the forms and the colors just go really well together, um, so I, these, uh, these are kind of, like, almost a bonded pair for me, um, I, I really enjoy reading with them together. Um, so this is a, this is a really fun, uh, really fun pairing. And I, I think I talked about it in my perfect pairs video. Um, but yeah, so that's, those are the, that's the Ari Kira and the Abstract Futures. So now we're moving into um, a little bit of a different category of my abstract decks, and that's ones that are a little bit more, um, well, I've got some, uh, they're a little bit more uh, maybe geometric or like simplistic. And the first one I'm going to show you is the Vitriolic Tarot. This is by the Dark Exact. This is a majors only um, tarot based on... Um, the, uh, it's an alchemical deck. And so this is a, I would call this an abstract deck, if only because the main thing that you're seeing here is a sigil. Um, and sigils, um, some people uh, really enjoy working with them. I find these um, cards really great for like kinds of like spell work or it's kind of like a good container to kind of like um, charge things up um, and then you also get uh, um, you get a big number you get the color of the stage in the alchemical cycle you get a little icon here and then you get the sigil and the title so to me these these are kind of still mostly abstract but I, I really love them. Um, I think they're super great. And I use them, uh, yeah, I, I don't often use them for readings. I use it more in kind of like uh, more kind of intentional um, like spell work type stuff. Um, and they're a really handy tool. Um, I like them a lot. 
but yeah, this is another deck that it's not quite, um, you know, the, the sigil is kind of the main focal point. And so sigils feel like a particular type of abstract art. Um, there's an interesting relationship between like sigil making and kind of like the power, right? Um, and I know uh, Coleman has another deck out. I believe it's called the uh, uh, Inflorescence Tarot. Um, and it's up on her Etsy at um, the Dark Exact. And it's it's a deck that's kind of, it's another abstract deck and it's based on um, mandalas. So if you're, if you're interested in this one and interested in um, abstract deck decks in general and you like kind of color and form her, um, it was a collaboration. I forget the name of the person who is the collaborator, um, but it's, it's cool. So you can check that one out too. Um, so uh, sigils are one type of kind of like energetic container. Um, and another are actually like mandalas. So this is the Yantra Wisdom deck. Um, and so this isn't quite a, um, I don't know if you would call mandalas abstract, but they're definitely not quite like representational art. So I'm including them here. And uh, yantras are a specific, a specific type of um, mandala. And each um, yantra is specifically designed. Um, here, uh, we're starting off with the planetary yantra. So Surya is the sun. So um, the yantras have, they're, sometimes they're called um, like uh, a container for that energy. So oftentimes they're used in meditation practices. So you'll stare at the, the bindu, the point in the center, um, and you might, um, for instance, you might uh, recite that specific mantra that's associated either with that planet or um, here's, here's the ones for the chakras. Um, this is the Sri Yantra, which is the kind of um, the like one of the master yantras. Um, but then we also have, we get into the the Mahavidyas, so um, the wisdom goddesses all have their own personal yantras. And then later on, we also get some of the um, um, other deities. We have Hanuman and Krishna and Shani. That's supposed to be in the planets. Um, but yeah, so uh, this this is, uh, I would still call, um, I would still call yantras kind of abstract, but... That doesn't mean that um, these each specific um, element uh, has like its name. Like these are called the bupur or the gates of the yantra. Um, and so, it, you know, just because it's abstract doesn't mean it's like highly symbolic and um, like more formalized, right? Um, but that's another another type of. Um, uh, abstract art I would say and it has its own purpose so like the like the sigil deck I just showed which I find useful um, for kind of more magical working type things I find this one useful um, as like a as a meditation tool or as you know um, if there's a particular planet or deity that you want to work with I find that that kind of um, helpful in that way so that's another kind of way to think about um, what abstract art does and um, how how to kind of interact with it differently. Um, changing gears again a little bit, um, another uh, oracle deck um, is your wise animal body, and this is by Serpent Fire, who's a very well known um, indie deck creator. And so this is a this is a, a a little. It's not super big. It's a little oracle that's um, meant to help with nervous system health. And so I would call this abstract art <laughs> because you just get the big title, and then you get this um, very sort of uh, neo psychedelic, uh, uh, very graphic. Um, very simple image. So 
what you're working with here is more, um, you'll, you'll see the color, you'll see the pattern and the text, but you're not really working with these, you're not really working with the images in these, right? Um, and the, uh, for a deck like this, the guidebook becomes really important because in the guidebook, uh, if we break it out here, you'll notice, let's do a little bibliomancy here. All right, integrate. So uh, for each of them, you're given kind of a little bit of an, uh, an insight, kind of an, uh, an overview of what that word or term or action is. There'll be um, a question, um, a series of questions to ask. Um, and then there's a wise body task. So there's suggestions, um, like here there's suggestions for like, uh, like watching a specific YouTube video called how trauma is really released. Um, so it, it gives you like things to do or things to try. And then there's a mantra. So um, in, in that way, this is a kind of abstract deck where, um, yeah, the, uh, the art <laughs> isn't really uh, isn't really doing a lot, and it, they're more kind of um, uh, in invitations for you to kind of like read read the book or try some different exercises. Um, but I think it's I think it's a pretty cool little deck. Another little abstracty guy. Oh, I forgot his book. I forgot his book. Uh, the next two decks, uh, you guys know it's Marseille study year, so I had to have a couple uh, Marseilles in the mix. And the ones I'm going to show you today, starting with this one, which is the Talisman Tarot. This was a, a deck that was kickstarted. Um, uh, I believe I got it last year. And I would say that this is the closest thing I have to like an abstract Marseille. Um, a lot of them are, uh, it's called the Talisman Tarot. So um, I think they were all done in pastels. Um, and it has this kind of like, uh, in pottery you would call it scrifito, where you're kind of like etching or scratching something away. And so it, it's a very kind of gestural... Um, rendition where you're kind of like reducing it down to its simplest forms um, which is really quite fun um, and so it's 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 also on uh, really nice um, heavy paper so it feels really nice in the hand um, but this is the this is the uh, Mar the abstract Marseille deck that I um, I've challenged myself to work with more this month, um, and it's it is quite fun. Uh, I like I like this I like this devil a lot. Um, I think that's really cute. Um, yeah, so that's the that's a an abstract an abstract Marseille, and the other one is I would say it's not. I wouldn't, I don't know if it's fully abstract because you still have um, all of the majors and courts are representational, but this is the Zagurner Tarot by um, Walter Wegmuller. This is a deck um, printed in 1982 um, by A.G. Mueller. So this is a, an out of print deck from the 80s. And I, I love it a lot. And it's a Marseille style deck. But the reason I'm calling it abstract is because of the minors. And it's so it's a pip deck, but it's a very kind of swirling, phantasmagoric, uh, kaleidoscope style deck. So even though all of the um, the majors and the court cards are kind of more representational, and you still get, like, I can kind of see that these are cups, but I can't, like, everything else that's going on is um, a little bit more abstract. And I also love that all of these, um, all of the miners have this kind of, like, proscenium arch with the, like, curtains, so it feels like um, some kind of theatrical production. So I think that's quite fun. 
Um, so this is, uh, and as I mentioned, the all of the majors um, follow the Marseille style. So I would uh, even it's it's definitely not a traditional Marseille deck. It's more of a pick pip deck, um, but it is on the kind of like abstract end of things. And this is a really fun deck to break out um, around this time of year, spring and summer. Uh, it's a f it's a fun it's a fun kaleidoscope. All right, so the last two decks I'm going to show you are both oracle decks. Um, so this little deck right here, just a little guy. This is the only deck that I actually uh, bought this month, um, and it's one that's been on my radar for a long time. And it's the Sovereign Oracle, and you can find it on Etsy. And it's just a little guy. It's a little guy, but it's a big guy. It's a 93 card um, oracle deck. And I've, it's been on my radar for a while because I think it's a really cool, uh, I like to use it as like a, a spread machine style deck. And what I mean by that is like if you're doing a reading and you're not in, and you don't know what, <laughs> what kind of spread to use and you, you want to do maybe something that's general, but you're not, you're not sure, you can just draw a couple of these. So maybe the spread becomes something to incorporate some like an area of vitality and an area to reflect on and then that's you draw a card for each and that's kind of the reading so that's what I mean by a uh, spread machine deck um but I would call these what do you guys think um the images that are the background here are this kind of like zoomed in blurred out um uh like stylized um like nature photography and so I think the images on the backgrounds themselves, I would consider to be abstract. And then um, all of the all of the keywords here kind of help um, help out. Uh, and so I like the um, I like the the text on the cards. So the first one is usually um, some kind of suggestion. So uh, try a tactile approach. Um, and then there's a few, you know, a few other, um, other options on each card if, if one of them doesn't quite, like, resonate. Um, so I think it's a really cute little guy, and I think a deck like this, um, would really, if you're, if you have, if you're kind of drawn to abstract style art, but you're having trouble actually using them in, in readings, um, then I would, like, I would suggest getting a deck... Um, like this, um, and I, I think this would go really well with something like Margaret Peterson or the Dream Dusk Shamanic Tarot, where you have these like wide open images, um, and I think something like this would really help um, help out. I think so. That is that is the Sovereign Oracle. He's just a little guy. I'm I'm really glad I finally pulled the trigger on this one. Um, and then the last Oracle deck I'm going to show you, let me know what you guys think. Um, it's not strictly an abstract deck, but I'm going to make a case that it is. Um, and that is the Candigy Oracle, which is a, a newer mass market uh, circular Oracle deck. And so the art style itself is a little bit more on the abstract side. Um, they're all watercolors. It's the same artist who made, um, is it the Illuminated Void? Is that the one? Um, but so some of the images, <laughs> uh, it, they are representational. So we do have a snake here and a moon. But to me, I, it feels like the titles themselves are abstract. So, uh, the concept of snake encircles the moon. What? You know, uh, uh, land of the vanish. Something like this. This is the perfect example. Your feet are two fish. What? Uh, the, the, to me, the titles are the best part of this deck um, because the titles themselves feel really abstract. So the concept of your feet are two fish 
that does something to my brain that just looking at this image, like, even though I, I see feet and fish here, I, I, like, I'm feeling like, like, uh, like it gives me this really abstract feeling. So to me, it's like productive of abstraction. Um, so some of, you know, some of them more so, something like Swarm of Bees, that's a little bit kind of more literal. Kiss by Whale Spray, or like, um, Your Heart in Sync with Cricket Song, stuff like that. I just feel like, um, uh, some of the titles are just, uh, a little bit, a little bit more abstract. Your ears become a butterfly. You know, stuff like that is just like, whoa, something's going on here. So, um, yeah, I would, I would say that this is, this is like abstract adjacent. So those are all of the abstract decks that I currently have and work with in my collection. Um, but I wanted to do, uh, sometimes in the, these videos, I like to do shout outs to other decks in the world that I don't have because I think they're cool, even if I don't have them. Um, and there was two decks that were on my wish list this month that I really, really wanted. And I wanted to be able to show you guys, um, in this video, but it wasn't in my budget this month. Uh, and all that was in my budget is this, uh, little tiny guy. So, um, but I wanted to give a shout out to... A tarot deck called the Depths Tarot. I'll link a description or I'll link a video of it in the description. Um, Chrissy Bentley made a really beautiful walkthrough of it and it's a abstract um, tarot deck and it's really beautiful. It's 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 a watercolor deck so it's kind of like very blobby, very shapey. I think it would be really great friends with the Canterbury Oracle. Um, and I think all of the pigments in that deck are used from, like, um, made from sort of natural resources. And it's very cool. Not in my budget. I think it's like a $70 deck. Um, but it's, it's in my wish list, so you can watch a video of it on her channel. And then another deck that I haven't really seen anyone do a walkthrough of um, is a deck called the Glyphs Oracle by Cheryl Riley. I believe she's an architect. Um, and I'll, I'll uh, put in a picture of it if I can. Um, and it looks like a really cool uh, sort of uh, semi-collage, semi-paint, um, uh, like painting glyphs uh, on top of like newspaper print oracle with some like really interesting keywords. I haven't seen anyone do a walkthrough of it and I love seeing walkthroughs before I buy a deck um, but I was willing to kind of like uh, take one for the team and get it but it just also wasn't quite in my um, budget this month. Um, but uh, I hope to see it out there in the world and maybe I'll get it eventually. Um, and then there's a few others, other um, kind of abstract de style decks out there. I feel like something like the Death Doula Oracle is kind of like very abstract. There's also like the Minimalist Oracle, and I'm sure you guys could like name more, or if there's other abstract decks that you love that I haven't mentioned, um, feel free to let us know about them down in the comments. Um, but with that said, we'll move into this next part of the video, which is... Uh, where we do, where we do a little reading. All right, so I've got us zoomed out a little bit for this reading. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of an abstract reading for us um, today. And I'm gonna be using a bunch of decks. I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use tarot as color. I'm gonna use uh, abstract futures, Ari Kira, and the Sovereign Oracle. And it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. You got to trust me. So since this is a bit of a, a collective reading, I was trying to think what would be a good um, kind of subject for a collective reading. And I feel like um, what I've been hearing from a lot of folks recently is it feels like really intense times, uh, not just in tarot land, but in, in, in the world at large. Um, 
were, if you're watching this de this video um, after at a different time, we're sitting here kind of in a eclipse season. <laughs> uh, just had, you know, just went into Merc Mercury retrograde type of thing. So I figured, I figured the question for us today would be, um, how do we, how do we sit um, with this intensity that's been going on? Um, maybe you've been going through um, springtime often brings some shifts and some things that maybe have been working for a while or have or you know maybe you're, there's a a big adjustment going on that needs to be made so uh, those can be intense times so we're gonna pull some cards about how to how to best sit with this intensity and one of my favorite um, spreads to do if I'm if I'm reading cards a little bit kind of more abstractly is like a uh, I think the nine card box spread is like a it's a great standard like open style reading where you're not really assigning each um, position a specific meaning. So I like to do that where in each row of the nine card spread you use a different deck. So maybe the bottom row represents um, like one aspect of the problem and the next row another and the, you know, that way. So we're going to do that, except I don't quite have uh, space to fit them all in. So we're going to, we're going to do it a little bit more, a little bit more uh, patchwork style. And I've, we've got, we've got some different nodes going on here. So now we're breaking out. Breaking out our our key cards. There we go. So while I'm while I'm getting these all dealt out, maybe you're uh, just uh, feel free to take a couple, you know, deep breaths wherever you are in space and time. Hope you're doing okay out there. All right. We're just going to pull a little, little keyword here. Thought that might be cute. We'll take a look at what we've got going on here. So we'll start, we'll start over here on our left. So our card here is the Eight of Discs, Lord of Prudence. Um, make sure you guys can see all that. We have the Lord of Prudence. Ooh, the King of Swords and Pure. Wow, I love these two images together. Don't you? I feel like there's that, like that color, that refraction going on. Free from corruption and evil. Wow along with the Eight of Discs. Maintenance is our keyword here. Interesting. So maybe in this kind of, uh, interesting. And this, the colors here seem to match. So I feel like these are together. So the Lord of Prudence. So maybe one way to deal with all of the kind of intensity we've been feeling is to find, like prudence to me is kind of like a more practical word so finding practical ways you can kind of like maintain yourself and we have the king of swords and the and the word pure here free from corruption and evil um so maybe it's like um ways that you can kind of like maintain your own kind of like ethical stances in the world um finding ways for you to kind of like um during this intense time, it's important to kind of like stick to your, uh, stick to, you know, the King of Swords is someone who perhaps has a lot of that kind of like, um, integrity or kind of, um, uh, I'm thinking pure also as in kind of like unadulterated. So it's, it's this kind of, um, 
yeah, this this sort of uh, narrowness of focus, or you're kind of um, you're you're just holding your own here. So finding ways that you can kind of like practical ways that you can kind of like maintain yourself, um, so you're able to kind of like maintain the 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 stance you want to take in the world, right? So let's see what we've got going on over here then. What else is going on? Ooh, we have the Seven of Cups container. That's really interesting. And then, ooh, we have Wonderful to bring wonder into the lives of others. And the Three of Wands here. Um, ooh, Lord of Illusory Success. Um, that's fun. So, um, uh, one of the things it says here is be intentional, be intentional about what or who you wish to show up in the space you have provided. So, um, <laughs> yeah, part of the seven of cups is this kind of like hopeful aspect, um, with the seven of cups, I like to see it as sometimes, you know, you have a lot of dreams of what you'd like to happen in the world, and sometimes it's hard to kind of, like, um, make it happen, but maybe one way to deal with this intensity is to make space uh, or make a container um, for uh, <laughs> for bringing, bringing wonderful things into your life, so making sure that you have um, space for that. And as I mentioned, I like to see this card as this sort of like suturing together. So maybe it's like making sure you have a container, but also um, making sure that you're able to like um, tie the kinds of things um, you want to yourself. Um, so whether that's, uh, you know, whether that's like inviting certain people into your life, uh, inviting certain types of connections, um, yeah, making a container for the, the types of things um, that feel wonderful to you, yeah? Um, and we've got this blue thing going on, so let's see what color we have over here. I'm so excited. Oh, it's more blue! I was feeling it might be more blue. I was feeling it might be more blue. And we have temperance. And our keyword here is release. And up top, we have Wise and the Two of Swords. Look at that, guys. So cool. So cool. Isn't this a cool reading? I think it's a really cool reading. Okay, so our last cluster of things over here, we have Temperance, Daughter of the Reconcilers, the Bringer Forth of Life. Um, yeah, so it feels like, um, this feels like with a lot of intensity, uh, you need to find an avenue to, uh, like, a wise uh, <laughs> way to kind of have those releases. And I think there's a lot of ways to find release um, from tension, and I, uh, not all of those releases um, are necessarily wise ones, and we have to be the ones, you know, have temperance and, <laughs> you know, no uh, know what's the, uh, you know, the, the wisest form of release for yourself. Um, and with the two of swords and the word release, um, sometimes, you know, with, with the two of swords, we have these kind of like two pillars here. So, um, I'm also thinking of like two sharp things are like scissors. So, you know, things, what kinds of things, um, you know, making some, like, wise cuts in, in the fabric of, of your life, or, you know, like, cutting, cutting away things, and then you unfold it, and then it's, like, the snowflake thing, um, so, like, find, with, with wisdom, finding what can be kind of, like, um, if things are really intense now, what are some of the things that you can cut away, um, to feel, uh, kind of a lessening of that, of that tension. Um, so now we'll just kind of have a overall look, look at all these guys going on. 
So we've got pure, wonderful, and wise, maintenance, container, and release. And then we've got the eight of discs, the seven of cups, and temperance. And I really like how we're going from just blue and to the kind of like blue but red and orange and then to kind of like the rest of the rainbow going all the way back to this yeah it's literally indigo blue and then we're starting over with the rainbow red orange we have green yellow so it's kind of that full full spectrum um of the blues so blue maybe maybe we're feeling 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 in the depths feeling kind of blue um, but in each, there's this kind of like, um, you know, this energy center um, in each of these colors. So um, blue, just with blues. Um, so that feels like maybe it's more toward, to, uh, like turned inward towards this kind of maintenance. Um, here we're getting into the reds, which is maybe a little, a color that's more about our own our own physicality, thinking about our bodies themselves as this type of container. Um, and then we have release with some of these like brighter yellow colors. Um, so getting into kind of the more, the more kind of like mental, um, kind of energetic level. So that is an example of like how to read uh, with cards that have there's no humans. There's no humans in these cards. So it can be a little bit tricky, but um, I hope you enjoyed that reading. Um, it's a little bit more of an abstract style reading, um, but I hope uh, it was interesting. Maybe you learned something or maybe it resonated or maybe it didn't. Um, but thanks for joining me today for another one of these basket videos. And if you've really enjoyed the reading, you can uh, remember you can always book a one-on-one -on -one reading with me. And the link for that is in the description box. But I'll leave it there for now. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, bye for now.